Tennis, soccer, universe. Well, probably I should be watching some soccer now, but if you know me, I usually take Mondays and Fridays off, especially during European weeks, and it needs to be a really, really, really good reason for me, either an absolute top game or Milan or Lask playing, which is not gonna happen uh, that often that I will watch on those two days that I just literally need to take off um, because I have to. So I decided to use this opportunity now to talk a little bit about what happened during the week on the national team level. We'll first do the new new Euro projection because the FIFA rating came out today. I actually was waiting for it yesterday already, but yeah, I guess for the whole Maradona thing they postponed it. So it came out today. Didn't have a huge impact, but it made for one slight change uh, that actually changes the um, final bracket a little bit and for that reason I decided yeah let's do that video and talk about that but then we also have to talk about Nations League which is the next video uh, I was thinking of putting it together but I decided no I have the playlist I want to keep it all together will be short videos so now with the new FIFA rating out this FIFA rating now takes into account the results from November in the Nations League so this is a much more accurate uh, projection than we had before here are the overall favorites. We still have Belgium and France on top, but Spain now leapfrogged uh, England because Spain had, of course, the 6-0 over Germany, which is a much, much better result than whatever England did. So uh, earning quite some points there. Uh, other than that, we see Denmark and Croatia flip-flopping. Wales now up in uh, 12th. Um, and also Ukraine. There's a lot of on the bottom, which is generally to be expected. By the way, I'm wearing my new Scotland jersey. Uh, just because I have it now. So let's wear it. It's a beautiful church. I want to give the Scots some love because I've been talking mostly down on them, but it's mostly because I'm disappointed of their overall level of competitiveness and I really hope it gets better and that the Euros will boost them a little bit. So now this is the overall picture. Let's look at it a little bit more granular, granular level, uh, group by group. There have been virtually no changes Yes, some points totals shifted slightly, but overall in groups A to D, nothing really changed. Note still that Scotland, although having a slightly lower rating due to the home field advantage, is favored over the Czech Republic to finish in third place. But as we'll see in the second one, it is not enough to finish in the top four at the moment. Here we see the only change. Sweden and Poland, which were already so level. Sweden has now a slightly better rating, hence they go ahead of Poland, which pushes Poland to the third place, which is still, like Sweden, good cool enough for second spot in the third place teams. And so they switch in the bracket the uh, spots. We have now Belgium playing against Poland, not Sweden, and Croatia playing against Sweden. It doesn't change much after that because uh, Belgium and Croatia are favored to move on. And we still have a Belgium-Portugal final, although Portugal is projected to finish in third. So very, very interesting there. Yeah. So yeah, those are my latest projections. Let, let me know how you like them. Uh, how do you think things are think going? Is the Sweden-Poland swap a good one? Let's see. This is how the model pulled it out. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that little bell icon as it will give you an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.